Welcome to Farm Solutions. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, we're doing some ballistic testing. Uh, I haven't done this uh, since I was working in the crime lab in Milwaukee. We didn't really have any funding to do anything like this in Rochester. And of course I've been in the firearms industry uh, and, and actual weapons, not doing ballistic testing for a while. And uh, I wanted to do some of this for a while, but uh, you know, again, with a, with a channel our size, it's difficult getting funding to do this type of stuff. And I was fortunate enough to uh, run into a gentleman uh, who works for Fort Scott Ammunition, who was telling me about a new ammunition that he had. And uh, it was it was quite interesting, because due to the fact that when you think of traditional uh, hollow point ammunition, uh, you know, you, the hydroshock and critical duty and, and gold dot, so on and so forth. They all do one thing in common. They mushroom. They expand to something that's larger than their original diameter. And that's how they, they do tissue damage. And the way that you destroy a target or stop a target is you destroy tissue uh, and whatever's around it. And traditionally, that's how it's been done. The bullets would uh, enter the, the, the tissue. Um, the nose would fill up with fluid or with, with any kind of uh, biological fluid. And it would cause it to peel back into basically like a mushroom. And as the bullet would expand, the pieces of copper would come out. And as it would spin, it would grab a hold of tissue. And it would traditionally, it would tear the tissue. And that's how it would, would stop it. The tumble on impact projectile, as we see right here, is quite different. This is a solid copper projectile that's machined. It comes to a relatively sharp point. So unlike the other one of the ones that we're looking at here, the, the monolithic uh, projectile, which is also one piece, but, it's ex but it expands, and we have the Hornady Critical Duty, which is the, which is the one the FBI has chosen that uh, passed all their barrier tests. And then we have uh, it's a new take on the Hydroshock, a deep penetrator. These traditionally work the same way a regular hollow point does. Uh, they enter and they they enter the, the tissue and it, exp it expands. There you go. The projectile that we see over here, the uh, the Fort Scott. Is a, is a, it's manufactured for, out of solid copper, and it comes to a sharp point, and it works very, very differently than these do in the way that it does its wounding. This is more like the 5.45 by 39 when we talk about military rifles. The projectile of a 5.45 by 39, the bullet does not come apart. The way that it does its damage is it's very, it's very long, it comes to a sharper point, and when it strikes, it causes it to tumble violently. And its damage is done by the bullet tumbling end over end. And, and ripping tissue that way. It gives you much more deeper penetration and in a rifle anyways, it's a little bit different because you're not dealing with the velocities, it's a little bit different, but with a handgun, I never really thought of it being used in, the, in, in that way. However, that's what Fort Scott is doing. It's doing, it's doing handgun ammunition in, in a different, in different than traditional way of having an expanding projectile. The hull point that I carry is the is the is a Hydroshock Deep. That and also the Federal HST are my two you know favorite loads. So I decided I was going to give some I was going to give it a try. I saw some of the uh, videos that were done you know previously on this and they were they were quite impressive. Uh, and due to my background in forensics, uh, I've seen my fair share of, of actual gunshot wounds uh, and seen what bullets that what bullets actually do. And the reality was, is most of the stuff that, that I had seen in my career in law enforcement was full metal jackets. Most of the ammunition that was used by the scumbags and crimes were generally the cheapest ammunition they could get, which was full metal jackets. Most of the time we saw hollow points, there were officer-involved shootings in, well, probably in my career, uh, the five years in Wisconsin. Most every department there was using uh, CCI Gold Dot, Spear Gold Dot. And then when we got to Rochester, uh, New York, we were seeing more of the Hydroshock in the HST rounds. And there was there was even some that were wearing there were still there was even some that were still using the, the evil flesh seeking black talon. Uh, so it was generally only when we uh, you know officer involved machines where we saw hollow points. Uh, military overseas, uh, it's a little it's quite a bit different because you're dealing with full metal jacket projectiles, you know, that we would use in, 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 in combat. So uh, but Knowing what the AK-74 did and where it got its reputation for, um, it sort of made sense thinking about it that it would probably work as a, as a pistol as well. So I chose a couple of these, these rounds for a specific reason. First off, the, the normal monolithic hollow point. This one here is supposed to be the largest expanding uh, projectile on the market today. Hornady Critical Duty got the blessing of the uh, of the FBI uh, because of all its penetration and, uh, and all its... Uh, 
is FBI protocol testing that it passed. And this one here, the Hydroshock, because this is what I've carried for quite some time. So what we have here is clear ballistic gel. It's not the organic that we're, you know, I'm used to using, uh, we used to use, it was, it was actually an organic uh, gel that we mixed, we mixed and put it in molds at the crime lab and put it in the refrigerator, came back and used it. Um, it's a little bit more of a pain to actually use, especially here in Texas, because, you know, we're still looking at uh, mid 80s um, and being and that being a organic material, it melts and it, and it and it can start to degrade very, very quickly. The clear ordinance gel, this does not uh, this because it is synthetic. You don't have those issues. Now, for as far as the way it performs, I don't believe that it's much different. There's two different kinds of media that we generally use in the crime lab. It was one was uh, was the, the ordnance gel, and then we used something that was called Maki ballistic media, which is basically uh, like a clay. This, what you see in here, is permanent wound damage. This is what the bullet does; uh, actually, just destroys tissue. With the Maki uh, ballistic, uh, basically a ballistic soap. What that did was show you the temporary cavity, which is the, the way that the uh, hydrostatic shock actually opens up the wound, where with this, like flesh, it comes right back down and contracts back down, where that shows, that holds it open so you can actually see what the wound actually looked like from uh, the shock wave that, that entered. So you're seeing permanent versus temporary between the two of them. So what we did was we went out and we did some shooting. So looking at the, looking at the tumble on impact, they make it in all different calibers, 940, 45, 380, uh, 556, 308. And I figured I'd start off here looking at the 9mm because 9mm right now, that is the cartridge. Um, you're seeing the 45 go away. You're seeing uh, the 40 SW has disappeared for some reason. Um, and now with the modern hollow points, which you see here, there wasn't as much of a benefit to the 45. So uh, I chose which ones I thought was uh, what were the top. Now I've seen some some videos where they've uh, where I've seen some videos where Fort Scott has done some law enforcement demos, and what I've seen has been extremely impressive. Where hollow points, they can get through some barriers. The problem is once it once it exits that barrier, what does it have left on it to actually damage or destroy a target? Pretty damn nothing, not much at all. Uh, just like when a bullet goes through a vest, for the most part, it gets through the vest, but how much energy is left after it goes through the vest? Well, similar thing with these hollow points. So when Fort Scott would demonstrate theirs, it would go through the media, and then it would go into the, into the into the gel, and it would perform the same way. You would see it enter, you would see it tumble violently, and you would and you would have the, the still have the deeper penetration. So it's actually going through barriers much better than, than of course better than a full metal jacket because of the shape, because you have a sharper point to it. But it's also uh, when it hits that flesh. Even after it goes through that barrier, it still becomes unstable and starts to starts to tumble. So, basically, we, we were, did maybe five yards is what we shot. And we did one at a time. So the first one we shot would be the tumble on impact. As we can see, we got about five inches before it started to tumble. And as we can see how it violently tumbled. And we can see how it penetrated the first block into the second. And we can see how it's on its, it's turned sideways. Total penetration of about 19 and a half inches. But as we can see, four inches is what we usually determine is skin or any kind of uh, clothing you would have on the body. So once it gets through, tumbles violently. We can see that's a pretty wide. Wow, that's, that's a... That's a damn near two and a half inch uh, violent move in there. Looking at the wound track that was created by the tumble on impact, I was I was really astounded because we enter here, and this bullet goes 19 inches. 
So you're looking at the bullet going about five inches before it starts to tumble. Now, five inches, if you, you probably look at that as basically going through skin or through fat before it actually hits the major organs. So that's pretty much the four inches is pretty much the magic number that you want it to actually go through before it starts doing its damage. Well, once it goes through, it it, it tumbled. And as you can see, this this massive wound track that was created and it went through a full 19 inches, which this meets the FBI's protocol. But if you look at the, the wound channel right in here where you see the most of the damage, you're looking at about five inches in this area right in here. So needless to say, this does as advertised. Uh, in all the videos that I saw, there was no trick camera. It actually does it. Well, the next one that we decided I, we decided to try was the, the, the monolithic projectile uh, made by Norma, which again was noted as being the most largely expanded of all the bullets that was out there. The Norma Monocore projectile. This is supposedly the largest expanding projectile on the market today. As we see from the top here, very, very different in the way that it works. You're lucky to get maybe about two inches before you started getting the mushrooming. As you see, the mushrooming goes for about five inches and with a total penetration of about 10 inches. So you're looking at 10 inches with a standard projectile hollow point versus 19 with a tumble on impact. Well, as we saw from that video, worked majorly different. Now this worked as a traditional hollow point would, as it would enter, you're only getting about two inches before it starts expanding. And then once it starts expanding, it loses that energy as it expands and it stopped much, much shorter. You're looking at only 10 inches of penetration from here to here before this bullet stopped. So this would not meet the FBI protocol. And it did do some good damage because uh, again, it did expand quite well, but I, it didn't do anywhere near the damage that the that the tumble on impact did. And as you see, we didn't get anywhere near the penetration. This, if you ever have to go through a car door, you have to go through some kind of a barrier, this loses energy relatively quickly. Uh, and as we can see, that energy that this one used to keep going forward, this used uh, to open up and then it's then cause it to stop. The next one we took a look at was the Hydroshock. The next one we have is the Federal Hydroshock Deep. This is sort of a new take on the uh, Hydroshock Deep Penetrator. So this one is designed to penetrate deeper, so we're gonna see how this one does. As we can see with this one, we got about 17, about 17 and a half inches of penetration. However, if we look at the wound channel compared to the previous two, very, very narrow compared to the other ones. So you do get a more deeper penetration, but for as far as its actual terminal performance, it's not nearly as good as the uh, Norma Monocore and certainly nowhere as near as good as the Tumble on Impact. Now the Hydroshock, it said it's gonna go fi it said 15 inches uh, in, in gel. Well, this one went 17 inches. It did expand, but if looking at the wound channel, it, it didn't really disrupt too much tissue. Nothing uh, anywhere is near what the uh, Tumble on Impact nor the Monocore bullet did. Uh, this was pretty much didn't do much more than a ball than a ball round would have done for as far as the way that it expanded. You don't see much of a wound channel really at all. You saw a little bit uh, when you get up into, I'd say probably the four or five inch mark, a little bit, but not much. The whole per the whole pretty much stayed the same diameter all the way through, but it did get the bent get the barrier penetration that uh, you would have expected. Uh, out of a deep penetrator. So this gets you more into the FBI protocol where some of the other ones won't because it gives you that penetration, but you don't get nearly the expansion or the tissue disruption that you do with the other two. And the last one we decided to try was the critical duty. Now the critical, then the critical defense line is their other line of this, which is more designed for, uh, for civilian use uh, where they don't require the penetration. This is actually a bonded bullet where you have the core bonded to the projectile where the uh, critical defense is not. So you wouldn't get the penetration you would with this. Now there's also a rubber plug inside of this bullet as well. And that, what that does is it prevents anything from clogging the bullet up uh, that, would, that would prevent it from expanding. Uh, so it also speeds up the expansion process. So now we're going to do the, the Hornady Critical Duty, which is supposedly passes every one of the FBI's pro protocol for uh, performance, including the penetration. Oh. 
as we see, this one was 17 inches, almost as much as the the uh, tumble on impact. However, for as far as the wound tract, it is not much better than that of the of the, of the standard uh, Hydroshock. So there's no question looking at these four high performance loads, which ones are the best performing? Tumble on impact in the uh, monocore. I have to say overall, the tumble on impact is far more impressive than any of them. However, within the first four inches, you're going to have a lot of damage with the the, nor the Norma. When we test fired this one, this one, again, it, it met the qualifications for the penetration. This one also hit 17 inches for as far as the penetration. And we can actually see in the gel, you'll see from the photograph, that the rubber plug is still with the bullet and never separated from the bullet. When you look at the wound channel, the wound channel is pretty much the same as the, the, the Hydroshock. Not much expansion, not much tissue disruption. But you do have the penetration, so it will pass the FBI's protocol. So, now, what is the best way to go here? Well, two different schools of thought. One is, are we more concerned about barriers, or are we more concerned about terminal performance? And this is where I have always had problems with the FBI's protocol. The FBI's protocol is weighed much more on, on barrier penetration than it has terminal. And this is a perfect example. You see... We got, our, we got our 19 inches of penetration, 17, 19 inches of penetration, but when we look at the wound channels, we just don't see it. So are you willing to sacrifice over penetration or penetration for barrier for the terminal performance? And again, the way you're going to stop a target is going to be to destroy tissue. The tumble on impact and the, and the Norma, they do that. They, they, they disrupt a significant amount of tissue. And... I have to say that uh, I've changed my mind on my carrying ammunition. Uh, I have pulled the uh, Hydroshocks out of my magazines and out of my pistols, and I have replaced them with Tumble on Impact. Um, I am convinced uh, that this is a much better way to go, that you get the best of both worlds. You get your penetration as well as your tissue damage, and they are accurate as hell uh, from the targets that I shot with both uh, my SIG P365 as well as my SIG P320. Uh, the accuracy is, is excellent. Uh, they do a very good job of maintaining the weight. They're precisionly made bullets on CNC machines. And they give you everything that you would possibly want. Now, would I have a problem carrying the Norma? No, not at all. Um, because that's still, it doesn't have the penetration. But again, I'm not as concerned about the deep penetration as I am uh, tissue disruption. Looking at these two for my use, where I'm not generally considering you know going around and shooting people through bo through barriers and car doors and things like that. Um, these don't really interest me too much anymore. Uh, I think I found a bullet that does a much better job uh, in both terminal and penetration. Bridges the two worlds, and you don't lose anything of, of either one. But with the, you know, there are other types of testing we can do as well. You can do we can, we can put the denim on there. We can do all that. Uh, we can do we can do barrier testing, and it's all been done before. And I don't think anything's going to change from what I've seen other people do. But this particular part, I really wanted to see for myself. It was a, a very different approach uh, towards a self-defense bullet for a handgun. Not for a rifle. Again, it's, it's done for a rifle, but it has not been for a handgun. So this is a, this is a product which I feel very strongly about. I think is, a, a, is an excellent uh, personal protection around. So for those of you guys who are interested in switching over your ammunition to a, a new, better self-defense cartridge, we have a f affiliate code with uh, Fort Scott Ammunition to save you 10% on any of their ammunition. So you go on their website, uh, use our code SAS, and you can save 10% off of anything on their website. So we do hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, even better share.